following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is Mick Shots. Streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Nikki Spagnola. Edition of Mick Shots, Bill Jones with Everson Walls and Mickey Spagnola, who is one of the very few people in the entire world who can go onto the premises of a National Football <laughs> League facility on a Monday or Tuesday. That's where Mickey is. He is hunkered down inside the SWBC Mortgage Studios. How do you get such privileges? Mickey? Uh, I don't know. He's essential. Yeah, I'm essential, right? Thank you very much. I don't know that it's a privilege. It's sort of a necessity to be here for some of the work I have to do. But I can tell you this, there ain't too many people up there where, uh, in our department uh, coming in on a Tuesday, by the way. I think there's two oh, of us. I think there's two of us up there. Oh, Let's well, just man. be real, Bill. Spags is having problems at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's okay, what, that's Spags. Well, we Everson, got you. We got your back, buddy. <laughs> Ever since <laughs> right under the bus, right off the top. <laughs> Well, uh, but uh, more specifically on that, uh, as far as NFL essential personnel, this has been going on for a few weeks now. Uh, they can't be on at team facilities here uh, on Monday or uh, Tuesday. And uh, so Mickey happens to be in, an, in another. The star in Frisco is so large that uh, Mickey can be in a non-essential wing of the star, and that's why he can be on the premises. Right, Mickey? Do you realize... I can't even remember the last time I was on the other side of the building. It 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 might wow. have been middle of January, yeah, something like that. I can believe that because after that we yeah. had you, you know, know no reason to be over there, uh, and then you know with a little bit of time off, and then. There, I mean, we just didn't go. I think the last time they, they did a deal with the assistant coaches, and I think that was maybe been the last time uh, anybody uh, has been over there because then February hit and there was no reason to be over there. And and then by the middle of March, that, that, that was it. It was closed down. And, uh, yeah, going to go through a whole season without seeing three-quarters of the players on this team or meeting them. If you can think about that, I know that I know Mickey. That is the most important thing. Everyone is wondering about whether Mickey Spagnola has access uh, to the team, <laughs> uh, but there, there's a lesser important uh, aspect of that <laughs> as well. And I was talking with Mike. <laughs> Last week, we were taping the Mike McCarthy show on Wednesday. We normally, we do it on Tuesday. Of course, Cowboys played on Tuesday. And we normally tape his show on Tuesday. Well, we've switched it to Wednesday now because he can't be at the facility on Tuesdays uh, uh, during a normal work week like this one is. Uh, but I asked him, and last week, uh, they were using the television studio to tape a Salvation Army uh, segment. And so I was actually in the press conference room right there in the atrium. My segment of the show virtually with McCarthy over in the coaches' wing, the players' wing, uh, the football operations wing, and so I asked, I asked McCarthy, I said, "Have you even been to this side of the building? And he, do you even know where the press conference room is?" And he doesn't even know where it is. He has not been to the wow. press conference room because, the, of course, the pandemic hit in March, and the Cowboys' off season didn't start until. Um, you know, and, and it was virtually when it did start in April. And, you know, his opening press conference was done at Ford Center at the Star. He, he has no idea where even the, the press conference room is at the Star in Frisco. That's how crazy this year is. So when you tape, I, I when you, when you tape his show, you guys aren't together? No. Well, I'm, in the, I'm in the TV studio, and he is where he does <laughs> normally does his press conference, which is adjacent to uh. his office there on the – in the operations wing. 
inside Ford Center. Yeah, because they're not, they're not supposed to be coming over to this side because we aren't the tested. That's people. right. We can't can't have any exposure to us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, you guys are just uh. That it's not nothing to do with the corona. You guys are just uh. Exactly. That's what it is. If, if, if they could have done this years ago, they would have done this. <laughs> right. This is only an excuse. Thinking, why and didn't now, they think of this what, a long time ago that we could get away from the media like this? I would. I would imagine the post-vaccine world up at the star. If McCarthy has anything to do with it. It won't change from what it looks like right now, not being around you guys, I would imagine. I, the only time I've been down, down there in the, in the studio area was when we were outside. And, yep. of course, I went to the wrong area. Look, you know, Spags gave me specific instructions, and, of course, I still screwed it up. So I was over in the main area. I was about to go downstairs where we do the podcast, you know, pre-COVID. And uh, man, they sent me through the ringer. You know, I had to do all of this and that and the test and the eye. I'm like, okay, where's Spags? And you guys are outside. So after all of that, I ended up going. I didn't want to tell y'all this story <laughs> before the show when we were outside. But yeah, I stumbled into that area. And it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's like a ghost town over there. I have an office. My, my Ethos Education uh, uh, Foundation has an office in the formation. And I haven't been there either. I got this one kidney, so I'm not even thinking about going around anyone and being in those close confines. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's, a, that's understandable. And you know you what? Know, as it relates to McCarthy, go ahead, Mickey. No, go ahead. Finish with McCarthy, and then I'll... I'll, I'll oh, well, I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, relates to uh, a team that's that struggled uh, now at a 4-9 and nine record and uh, you know, the different storylines that emerged as, as uh, you know, the heat is on the coaching staff and so forth. Uh, it really affects things the way the media covers the team, too. We don't have, and the media in general does not have access uh, beyond the Zoom press conferences, the WebEx press conferences that are done, where you, you don't have the walk-off uh, with the coach to get perspective on things. Uh, you, you don't have the opportunity to talk uh, off the record with coaches or players or, or so forth. And it uh, really it hurts uh, the ability for the media to do their job. And it, I think in the end it hurts even the perspective of uh, the coaches and the players because th what they are actually thinking, even in an off-the-record uh, perspective is not able to get out there uh, to the media as easily as it would in a normal year. Yeah, it's very, it becomes very sanitized because everybody gets the same information, right? Uh, and, and, you know, the other thing that I think it also does is when you don't have face to face contact with somebody, a player, or coach that you're writing about. I think it encourages people to take shots because you don't have to be confronted with whatever you say or whatever you write, right? No one's going to like, oh, hey, wait a minute now. What did you say about me? And you don't get that, right? And you don't get a choice of yep. who you want to talk to. It's basically who they provide for you to talk. Like yesterday, you know, it, it, we got the coordinators finally. It's been a while since we've been able to have a, a conference call with them. So you, after Mike did his deal, the coordinators spent 10 minutes or so uh, answering questions. But it's easy to throw hard questions at somebody when they aren't looking at you face to face. Um, you know, same thing like yesterday when Stephen got peppered about, you know, is, is Mike McCarthy's job safe? You know, it's like, all right, <laughs> you know, I understand you want to ask that, and you can ask tough questions, but it's easier to ask them tough when you're separated, right? And um, mm. so uh, I think that's changed things also, by the way. Uh, one thing I was going to point out I, before, I think it, before I came down, go ahead. the NFLPA w did a conference call, and they had uh, one of the, uh, their doctors, uh, Dr. Tom Mayer, uh, he, w he was uh, on the conference call. And one of the questions he got, and I thought this was somewhat important, um, what uh, they were going to tell the players about the vaccine. like, And, and it was like, you know, he, he first said, uh, you know, we, you can't make them take the vaccine. We would 
recommend it. Uh, but he also said that what they're telling the players is it there it's not known yet when this group of people in society will be the vaccine will be available and he said and it would be unlikely for anyone in in the team area to be vaccinated before february 1st so meeting before the super bowl uh but right. uh, he said it's their it's their duty though to let the players know about the side effects that mm. are generally mild and that they only last maybe a day or so if indeed you get uh, any side effects. So uh, th- I thought that was uh, very interesting, and he was talking about how the vaccines 94, 95 uh, percent effective uh, for, for for the people and that they would certainly encourage the players and their families uh, to get vaccinated, not only for your own good, but to help everybody else out because, you know, you don't want to be the guy that spreads it to somebody else that didn't get uh, vaccinated. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting uh, talking about uh, how, how, uh, how, how they're going to inform uh, the players down the road. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting when you look at the NFL and you compare them to other workplaces, they can be extremely uh, intrusive on your privacy as a person. Because even though we have a union, you know, you don't really look at the NFL as a corporate uh, environment, so to speak. I mean, it's it kind of it's a, uh, almost an entity to its own in regards to how you deal with your employees. Uh, usually with the NFL, they take a lot of liberties when it comes to uh, 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 mandating that their, their players dress a certain way. They have to come and talk to the media. There are certain things that they are bound to do that most corporations don't have the ability to make you do. And now here we come with uh, the COVID, which is extremely important. And it goes along the same line as the flu shot. That's when they have to be hands off. Right. They can't uh, force you to do anything and say, OK, you take this shot or you're going to be uh, fired. You know, you're going to be released. That's something that they can't do. But if you don't show up for a press conference, OK, if you don't talk to the media, and I'm talking pre COVID and you don't talk to the media and things of that nature. There are certain things within the contract between the player and the organization that clearly I think imposes or infringes on, you know, your rights as a human being. But when it comes to this shot, they can't do that. And I think that's a very interesting comparison in regards to how uh, these these uh, organizations treat their employees and especially their players. On those lines, uh, you know, it's just like Everson, you mentioned off the top with one kidney. I mean, people have different medical conditions to where, I mean, someone cannot dictate to, to a person whether or not, uh, you know, that, just, that person has to make the decision on their own whether they're uh, going to take a vaccine. Uh, I'm looking at the clock trying to determine if we got time. That was a great Monday night game last night. And I want to leave enough time for us to, to get into that. How about we do this first? Take an early because, break. Mickey, you mentioned. <laughs> you know, well, no, I want to mention this because you take mentioned. Take an on time break. We <laughs> yeah, never right. take an early break. We, we need yeah. to take an on time right. break. <laughs> you, you asked Chris the, about that. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned the uh, question asked of Stephen Jones yesterday, and there was an NFL report that, uh, that Mike McCarthy is coming back. Uh, that the, and then and then and so I have to, I have to go on my CBS 11 newscast last night sportscast last night and say that that and we, you know we we use the sound bite from Stephen Jones saying he's coming back whatever and I said Stephen Jones asking answering the question that nobody's asking because there's there's not any there hadn't been any speculation that Mike McCarthy wouldn't be coming back nobody's asking that question but we in the media we make it into a story because okay now we got a soundbite confirming that he's coming back well nobody nobody thought he wasn't coming back next year I mean it's just crazy the way our business works and all it has to do is one tail the tail is wagging the dog one person asks yeah, the question right. right one person asked the question and and you know and i think he kind of said frankly i don't even think i should need to answer this uh 
Um, you know, it hadn't even been a thought. And then Mike McCarthy and then, has got to be asked, hey, yeah. the, 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 the Stephen Jones gave you, uh, you know, uh, right. it, it's like he, a ringing it, endorsement. A ringing endorsement that <laughs> you'll and, and be Stephen, back. <laughs> and, the, and the way the question was asked to Stephen, because I think Ian Rappaport had a, a, a report that Mike McCarthy is coming back, okay? And so then it gets asked of Stephen on the radio that are you surprised that it's even being yeah, questioned that right. Mike McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, so then Stephen has to answer it. So then it gets turned around to Mike McCarthy that, okay, well, Stephen Jones says you're coming back. Whatever, and It all gets twisted <laughs> like it's a story all of a sudden. And then this morning, Jerry gets asked about it. And so, and so now we're, we're going on 48 hours of a non-story where they're having to react to it. It's crazy. And Mike Nolan was asked That's about you it. That's you guys' fault. That's all you guys' No, don't be saying exactly. you guys. Don't be saying that, you guys. That's why that's <laughs> that's why Talk Parcells radio. talked about y'all so badly. He uh-huh. called you the I believe he called you he was before Trump calling y'all the enemy of the people, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. <laughs> no, we're the defenders of the people. And don't confuse uh-huh. talk radio with us guys, okay? <laughs> They're entertainers. We're journalists. And uh, Let's not ever make that but, mistake again. <laughs> but, but, but that's the way the old fake news narrative gets going is, is uh, all right, and, 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 and by, you watch this weekend on pregame shows, the big talk around uh, the, in Dallas, Fort Worth, in Texas, around the Cowboys was whether or not uh, Mike McCarthy will be coming back next year. There never was any thought about it. Now that. it's going to be on ESPN. They're going to be talking about it all day. That's right. <laughs> all right. Just getting started on mixed shots. How about that Monday night game mm. last night? Let's get into that and maybe how the, this team might be able to learn a little something from those teams last night when we come back in a moment. Hey there, Cowboys fans. With Tide Cleaners at-home pickup and delivery, cleaning your clothes has never been more convenient. Simply sign up at your local store, set out your dirty clothes, and one of our Tide Cleaners professionals will come directly to your home for a totally contactless experience. Your clean garments will be returned promptly the next scheduled delivery day, so skip the errand and enjoy life, not laundry. Visit TideCleaners.com or your local store to sign up for Tide Cleaners at-home pickup and delivery today. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Grab some OtterBox gear and get ready for hanging with the boys. From rugged venture coolers to tough as nails elevation tumblers, we've got what you need to keep your game day drinks frosty and your football feast ice cold. And with cases, screen protectors, and power accessories, you can defend your phone and stay connected to every play. Gear up at OtterBox.com and amp up the fun of every Cowboys game. That's OtterBox.com. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of mine. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. To make shots. You can now support your beloved Cowboys from anywhere. Open up AT&T's Fan Zone feature inside the Cowboys app and record your personal cheer and referee signals. You will receive a personalized mosaic and may show up on the AT&T Live FX video board during the game. And the game this week against the San Francisco 49ers, a noon kickoff at AT AT&T Stadium. 
And, uh, in fact, what a big week at AT AT&T Stadium this week. We've got, uh, for those of you not living in the area, uh, we have high school football state championship games this week for the smaller classifications, starting from Class 1A through 4A, top two classifications, 5A and 6A. Uh, Everson and Mickey, they're in. They're going into just the second round of the playoffs here in wow. Texas, in high school football in Texas. <laughs> they're going to be playing <laughs> high school football playoff games Christmas weekend this year. And in fact, they, they, they're six weeks of playoffs. And so for the 5A and 6A schools, they're playing all the way until January 16th or so uh, this year. But they. But here's the deal this week. All right. So you've got. You've got uh, high school state championship games uh, starting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then you got the Big 12 championship game, Oklahoma and Iowa State at uh, 11 a.m., I think, on Saturday. And then the Cowboys and 49ers play at noon on Sunday. So there you go. That's your schedule at AT AT&T Stadium. That's a lot of field changing out. in Texas, it sometimes goes into the next calendar year, it seems like. Did I see though that uh, one of the uh, <laughs> divi- one of the one eight games, the championship game, got postponed or canceled? Yep. Yes, it when uh, when it's a, a class one A school, and you have a, a COVID case at a school that only has fifty students to begin with, <laughs> uh, it makes it problematical uh, to. Uh, but the, you know, what's happened is you know early in earlier rounds of the playoffs. If there's a COVID outbreak on a on a team on a high school football team, they just got to forfeit the game. They can't play, and so you forfeit the game. The good news for that team of the town, but the good news for that school is they're just going to go ahead and postpone their state championship game and play it like a month from now when they play the other state championship I got you. game. Okay. So it being the last round, they don't lose uh, playing the game. But uh, but yeah, that's the way. That's the way it is. This is so crazy. But the show must go on, right? That's right. That's exactly (laughs) right. And what a show uh, it was last night. (laughs) It it, it was a show. Before we get into it, before last night, though, I want to mention this. What do you think of the announcers on the uh, Cowboy game this week? This past week, you had Kevin Kugler and Chris Spielman doing the game. And I thought, I I really like, Mickey's shaking his head there. I like listening to Chris Spielman on the game. Spielman was fine. Why is that? Spielman was fine. Yeah. Yeah. And all right. And the reason I bring it up is that is the last game Chris Spielman will be doing because he is leaving the Fox broadcast booth and he is joining the front office of the Detroit Lions. That's breaking wow. news uh, this afternoon. So was he anyway, I must so say, I found I found an analyst that's a that's not a, a cowboy, a former cowboy. I got to ask, Bill, you know who impressed me since you brought that up? I, I think I mentioned his name when he uh, broadcast our game. I thought uh, Jonathan Vilma did a good job. I didn't know who he was by voice when I heard it, but I thought mm-hmm. he did a really thorough job in regards to our game. I don't think we won that game, so that's why you might no. not be so impressed with him. No, but, no, he, uh, that was the Viking game. He did the okay, Viking okay. game, and it was a he game the a Cowboys won. He really yeah. did a good job. Uh, he didn't talk too much. He he just seemed to be very precise in what he was saying. His thoughts were good, and uh, he worked well with the, with the play-by-play. I, I did like uh, Spillman, but I enjoyed uh, Vilma just a little bit more because – I was surprised to hear that was his name in the booth. And from then mm-hmm. on, when I listened, I was impressed. Yep. All right. And, I, and I've and i heard Spielman before. I just, I just, it was a different voice and I, I enjoyed it. All right. Monday night last night. What do you think of that game? I mean, there, there are games that happen during the course of a regular season that are, you know, last year, it was the last year when the Chiefs played the Rams and there was yes. a crazy game that went into the 50s, whatever. Six uh, touchdowns, well, three picks. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, by, by and Mahomes, uh, yeah. that was that was like one of the, might have been the most memorable game from that regular season. The last night's Monday night game, and especially the storylines with Lamar Jackson leaving the game, coming back, and first play throws a 44-yard touchdown pass to Hollywood Brown and, uh, to give him the lead, and then Baker brings him back, and then Justin Tucker wins it. 
uh, on a 55-yard field goal. I mean, that, that game had a little bit of everything. You know what I, like, what I liked about that game was uh, the drama of it all. To me, a little bit overhyped in regards to Lamar coming out of the dressing room. It's not like he was Willis Reed with a broken ankle. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know. There's one word that he had, a, you know, just a, uh, his hamstrings got tight on him. The other word was he had to go relieve himself. <laughs> that one. So you've got those two, you know, stories out there, and whichever one they are. I mean, OK, the guy came out of the locker room. He threw a, threw a touch. I, I didn't I didn't look at it as a New York Knicks Willis Reed moment. No. Not that particular moment. The entire ball game now, yes, was amazing because both teams came to play. We know how much Baltimore needed this game, I think, more than the Browns needed it. And the fact that they came out and finally played well offensively. I mean, defensively, Baltimore is still in trouble. You know, they still let the Browns just run all over them. Uh, Mayfield also had a great game. So I think you had – you possibly had uh, uh, at least – 200 yards rushing against that defense. And you had Mayfield uh, through for almost 400 yards. So as far as I'm concerned, that that whole game was a good game, but but the whole Superman coming out of the locker room, I thought that was a little bit overplayed. Well, well did, they, they ever, did they ever specify why he went into the locker room? I was working. He did. I was working. And so I was kind of half listening, half working. And then when the game got good, I said, oh, screw work. I'll, I'll finish it later. I'm watching this. <laughs> but did they ever say why he went in during the game broadcast? Yeah, he said it. Who said it? He said that he went in. No, no, I mean Lamar during the Jackson. game. No, I mean during the game. They were saying cramps. Oh. During the game, they, they said, said cramps. during the game it was cramps. That's what they said. Well, there's the game, different kind cramps. of cramps you can have, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And see, that's why you have Twitter going off saying uh-huh. that uh, it was menstrual <laughs> the cramps. bidet situation could have, <laughs> could have worked very well during that situation. And so, I don't know. He said leg cramp. He, Lamar Jackson actually said leg cramp as he explained it. And then he saw McSorley go down and he comes, you know, coming out of there. He still looked like he was walking tight. Now, walking with a tight hamstring and walking with constipation, they look just alike, really. I could imagine if you, if you want to analyze it. So, I, I, you know, I think it was a little overblown about the, the, about the bidet. Well, I do did, believe it was just a hamstring issue. I, I think. He, he, did, he did have a lot of good runs last night. <laughs> <laughs> What? He did. He ran for like over 100 yards. What do you mean? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> was that Spags, with, that was your setup. Was that with the ball? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> that was a pretty oh, long sprint man. from the locker room to the bench, too, by the way. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, you know, they, they early on, they talked about you can't tell his hands from the ball because he's brown. So I would imagine <laughs> if he was in a particular situation, you still got brown to deal with. So I don't know. You know, <laughs> after, after watching that game and you said how it relates to things that we see with the Cowboys, maybe we just need to get off the defense. Because even the good teams don't play good defense. You just got to score 50 points, right? This is turning into college football and definitely high school football. No one plays defense or Mm -hmm. there's not enough athletes, so the good ones are all on offense and everybody else go play defense and we'll just try to outscore them. But it it, it lets you know. It, It lets you know the importance, though, Spags, of situational football. You understand? There are certain moments in a ball game you have to be prepared for it because it can make or break your drive. It can make or break your, your, your quarter. It can make or break your game. So to me, it makes coaching even more important to be prepared with whoever you're playing with. I don't care if it's a practice player or not. When, you, when we go over something, you have to listen to what we're saying because this point of the ball game is going to be important. As much as we saw scores and amazing plays, it still comes down to situational ball. The, the most important situation last night, fourth down and five. 
right? That's when he comes out of the out of the locker room. He makes that fourth down and five. Situational football, it don't get it convoluted with all these great plays. It still comes down to certain parts of a ball game that you have to be prepared for and you have to win that battle. Never let that be confused with all the points that are being scored. See, and, and hey, what do you think of uh, – go ahead, You Go ahead, Mickey. No, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, what, what do you think of uh, Stefanski's decision to go for two where they were down uh, 34 t- – they were down 34-20, they scored a touchdown to make it 34-26. Now, they had missed two extra points earlier, Cody Parkey had, their kicker, and they decided to go for two to make it 34-28, to and um, – how did it play out after that? They they wound up taking the lead. That's right. To make it 35, 30 yes. And then Baltimore comes back to take the lead. That the pressure on Baltimore where they had to anyway. It was uh it was it was the uh, the height of analytics right there, Mickey. You think yes. you think it was <laughs> analytics, or do you think he looked at his kicker and I'm going, I'm not missing another extra that, point. We're better <laughs> off just going for two. <laughs> And you know yeah, that's the I, guy. I love, that's the I guy that had a history, right? That's the guy the Bears got rid of. Oh my God, is that that guy? Wow. Right? Isn't that, yeah, that's, that the dude? That's what I expected from him. Who's that? Parky. Oh, the Parky. kicker that that missed yeah, four Parky. field goals in the playoff game when Trubisky was having a good season. Was that two years ago? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, he banged one off the upper. Anyway. Right? I, you know, once he, once they <laughs> once they made the two point conversion, I was sitting there going, "I'm I'm kind of liking this." You know, they had momentum. Oh, Mo was on their side at that point, and uh, I I kind of like the decision because when you think about it, I, I'm starting to come around on this idea of going for two like that because you you always have the opportunity. You're still only down eight, okay? Even if you don't make it, where you're still within a score. That's true. I would have a real problem with it if it was otherwise, you know. Like I, I, I wouldn't 10, agree. If you're down by I 10. would not. I would not agree with it if I am down. Let's say I'm down 34 to 25, and I'm going for two to get it within seven. I would kick it then to make sure I'm getting within eight. A lot of although I'm sure the analysts that, would say, yeah. I don't I don't a, like a that. A lot of coaches. We had that situation come come right. about yesterday. Uh, was it? God, I can't remember the team, but they had a, they were trying to they were down by ten, and they decided to try and score first. And like I'm it. talking to my son, and I'm thinking, man, I'd really kick this field goal now because at that time mm-hmm. they were just under three minutes to play in the ball game. Let me just kick this field goal instead of trying to grind my way into yeah. the end zone and using a bunch of time. Well, that's what they ended up doing. They used a bunch of time, and of course, they didn't have time to. Come it was. In. I think that it was, was the, the Saints. Game. It was the Saints, wasn't it? Was it the Saints? Because they were okay, down. I, I, I they were recall. down ten, and they needed to score twice. They ended up scoring the the touchdown. They could have saved but time. But it took them like a minute. It no. took them a minute to. Score. Now, what happened? What happened on the Saints game was. They uh, they took a sack and then they kicked a long field goal didn't make it oh that's right and then Jalen Hurts fumbled Hurts fumbled and they went ahead and drove down and scored the touchdown and then on the onside kick they came the one I'm talking about is Miami and Kansas City oh okay okay Miami KC Miami was down there trying to score because they were down by two scores. And if I'm not mistaken, it took them like a minute, 10 seconds to score. Way too much valuable time yeah. because you still, you still need a field goal after you score. So do you go for the field goal first, get that out of the way, quick money, quick money, and then you still have time. Don't even have to do an onside kick. Kick it deep. Hopefully stop them. Use your uh, timeouts or whatever. Sometimes no timeouts, but it's still a better management of the clock, I think. I think so, too. I agree with you. All right, now I, we, we blew through that break, and so we're, we're past time on it. So we're back with more mix shots in just a moment. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. 
Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Oh. Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Grisol for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. Back, back. To mixed shots. Don't miss the virtual Christmas extravaganza presented by Albertson and Tom Thumb. The most electrifying holiday show of the season can be watched on Dallas Cowboys Facebook and Twitter on December 24th at 6 p.m. Central or on demand at DallasCowboys.com slash Christmas. Wow. Okay, Christmas Eve on December 24th. That's what it says. What better way? All right. So go to the uh, Dallas Cowboys Facebook page for that and probably many other places to be able to watch the Christmas extravaganza. All right, Mickey. Yes. Uh, the team will be back to work on Wednesday. Yes. And it uh, looks like Bill is uh, going to be back to work on Wednesday. He's out of it. It looks like he's going to be out of his COVID protocol or COVID reserve issue? Reserve COVID-19, yeah. Mike McCarthy said uh, Cheeto would, he anticipated him being back uh, on Wednesday. Uh, also said that Savion Smith with the hand injury suffered in the game. He said he's going to try to go Wednesday. Maybe Donovan Wilson uh, will be back and maybe Trayvon Diggs uh, hopefully Maybe he said on Wednesday. So uh, that's kind of a quick injury update. Uh, he also pointed out that this week, uh, since it's getting close to the end of the season, what he normally does is uh, through the practices during the week, uh, he's cutting 60 minutes out to make sure he's keep, keeping his team's legs uh, fresh. So um, how about this? So it looks like, the 49ers are going to go to C.J. Beathard as their starting quarterback, maybe benching Mullins. Um, I went back and looked, and I was thinking, C.J. Beathard, he played against the Cowboys before. Mm -hmm. And he did. That's he started right. the he 2017 did. game against the Cowboys when Kaepernick um, – no, not Kaepernick, they, uh, they benched Brian Hoyer. And so – now, the last, this will be the third time in a row they've played the 49ers without their starting quarterback. Because in 2016, when they played the Niners, Kaepernick was still coming back from three offseason surgeries thumb, knee, and shoulder. So Blaine Gabbert <laughs> was the starting quarterback in that game. The Cowboys oh, only Lord. won 24 to 17. So, once again, the Cowboys are going to face C.J. Beathard, uh, who in that game in 2017 completed 22 of 38 passes for 235 yards. He ran five times for 30, but he was sacked five times, five times. And guess who caught one pass for five yards in that game? Some guy named Hicotini. The tight end that's now on the Cowboys Cole. practice squad. Cole Hicotini <laughs> caught one pass in that game. 
Well, I would not have guessed that, Vicky. I bet you wouldn't have. <laughs> How's that for digging up a stat? Uh, and then the other thing that's questionable for San Francisco is uh, Mostert has an ankle. They're not sure uh, if he'll be uh, ready to go, uh, along with uh, George Debo. Kittle is on IR, and he's got a foot. They're thinking he might get back. Uh, this week, but they're pretty definite Jimmy Garoppolo is not ready to go uh, in that game. So if Mostert is not there, Tevin Coleman will share uh, running back duties um, for the for the 49ers, who are now 5-8, and eight, only one game better than the Cowboys, by the way. Oh, and, and by the and way, one more, what? one more, and this one's really important. Debo Samuel's out. He's got a hamstring, and it looks like oh, he may miss the rest yeah. of the game. And that guy is that a is big extremely headache. extremely important. Yeah, that guy yes, is a he is. headache. <laughs> he could be the running back if most of it didn't make it. I, I, I promise you, this guy's a stud. I saw that earlier, Spags. I'm so glad. Well, I don't want him for his sake. Right. You don't want to see him hurt. But a guy like Debo being out, it kind of – Peaks my interest a little bit in, in how it can, you know, relieve our defense a little bit. Then you're talking about most of being out. But his backup, Coleman, that guy runs downhill as well. Yeah. I mean, this is just that team's culture. The team's culture is really a lot like ours in regards to the running game. No matter what, we really want to establish that, uh, that position for us offensively. You got Kittle out. I, I, I think he's going to continue to be out. You've got Debo out. The Cowboys have a chance, guys. They really have a chance. I remember when we were 1-15 back in 1989. Losing at home was always so disheartening because you felt like you just let not just your teammates down, but everyone else who was at the game. And sometimes playing on the road can be a little bit of a reprieve for you, right? We won our only game at RFK. You remember that, Spags? Oh, I do very well. We we, oh, we, yeah. beat, we beat Doug Williams and the, 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 at that time, Washington Redskins. And that was our only win of the season. And it did feel good to play away from home <laughs> and get away from the, from the disappointment that you kept laying down at that time at Texas Stadium. So I think the Cowboys felt a little better being on the road, winning on the road. That's really a great feeling to win on the road. It really feels better than winning at home. So uh, hopefully they could kind of get that out of the system like they did in Cincinnati and come back home and, and do work. Uh, Donovan Wilson being out, I can never remember his name, but him being out, of uh, him being possibly in this ball game, that also gives me uh, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of hope because I really like the way he established a, a, a presence in that secondary. He's the only one that I saw coming up in a timely fashion, and not just throwing his head in there just trying to hit somebody, but he was making timely, precise hits on receivers and running backs. I'd be good to see him come back in the game. Maybe he can make a difference like he did, I thought, in the Vikings game and, and propel us to have some type of a, 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 a defensive uh, stubborn presence in that secondary. You know, this might right now, surprise we're just, we're just you about people do what they want. This might surprise you about Donovan Wilson. Um, so he's he has started seven games, so just one more than half they've played. He ranks sixth on the team right now. No, tied tied for fifth with 47 tackles. The guy in fourth has 49, so he's almost fourth in total tackles, and he's only started seven games. So that tells you sort of the impact he's had back there as a safety, making tackles. He's got two and a half sacks, a quarterback pressure, two forced fumbles, and obviously he recovered, uh, no, three forced fumbles. No, yeah, three forced fumbles and two recovered. So, yeah, he's made an impact. Wow. You know, and I was going to ask you, Everson, wow. <laughs> if you ever remember being on a team that and you guys didn't have a practice squad. You had taxi squad or whatever that stuff was called. But yep. going yep. like having to go three and four deep at the cornerback position to get through a game like the Cowboys did this past Sunday. That's unbelievable that they're we out have, there with practice squad. We have guys. never we have never had that. No, we have never had that having to go that deep. 
But you know, you remember 1989. Uh, Jimmy was looking for players from all over the country or maybe even all over the world. We're out there practicing, and we see people almost with our jersey numbers on out there, you know, trying out for the Cowboys and seeing who they can replace. So they were always running guys in the 40. They were always having them do drills. And here we are at that time hadn't won a freaking ball game. I think we were 0-8 before we became 1-8. and And Jimmy Johnson did not – hold any secrets. He's like, look, we're over here working guys out to take y'all's spot. So if you guys want to keep playing like crap like you're doing, one of these guys is going to take your position. That was always one of the most bold, outrageous things I had seen in a long time from the coaching staff. We kind of nicknamed that the revolving door, right? A guy would come in on Tuesday, (laughs) work out. He would practice for the first time on Wednesday. He would start on Sunday and get cut on Monday. (laughs) It happened over and over and over again. Hey, before- that was that was the closest we came, Bill, to a COVID situation. <laughs> was just to suck as badly as we did in 1989. Hey, I'm going to leave you with to the- do with injuries. Or yeah, anything. no, it had an inability. <laughs> is what the problem was. Yes, <laughs> talent. Uh, I'm going to leave you this with this stat, and I don't know who gets charged with coming up with these things, but uh, <laughs> LP Latticer, a Canadian has played 250 games in the National Football League. He is tied with one Eddie Murray for the most games played by a Canadian-born player in the National Football League. Who figures that stuff out? And I heard it, and I said, well, let me look up and see. Oh, Pro Football Reference has a list of about 100 names of every Canadian player that played in the NFL and how many games they played. And sure enough, he was tied with Eddie Murray for 250. So on Sunday, assuming all goes well and he gets to go out there and play, he will have played the most games in the National Football League by a Canadian. Oh, come on, man. We should be striking up the Canadian National Anthem right, <laughs> right now. That's, you you got to right. get Chris I, I to love that you gotta coordinate anthem. with the producer, man. We should have been. <laughs> uh, do they put their hand on that? What do they do? <laughs> Nida, oh, Canada. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking he's a shoe in to be he's a shoe in to be a co-captain, right? On, on, on Sunday. Yeah, That's pretty cool. Like, pretty cool. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Appreciate it, Mickey. Sure. Appreciate it, Everson. Yes, sir. And how about we do it again tomorrow, another edition of Mix Shots, a Wednesday edition tomorrow. How about? We'll be here. How about right. them Cowboys? <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Chris. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them Cowboys? Yeah!